Expected value is a term that we hear a lot in the collectible world. And I just wanted to talk about it in, in its definitional purpose and, and what it's really used for and, and what it really means. Because I feel like a lot of people don't really use it in the correct context. I think we need to step back a little bit and kind of see like, okay, what does this word really mean? And, uh, you know, how can we really use this? And before I go into any any type of uh, conversation, I just want to say this is not investment advice. This is just entertainment here, man. I'm, I'm just entertaining you here. So expected value. If you if if I come up to you and say, hey, hey, broski, um, this uh, blessings of deliverance. What's the expected value on this card? And if you told me any number, I, I would be like, no, that's incorrect. Expected value. <laughs> It is not is not just the value of the card. If you go on like TCG Player and you're like, oh well, Bronson, that blessings of deliverance is worth uh, you know twenty five cents. I'd say yes, but that is market value. Market value is the price of the card on the internet or wherever, right? Expected value is when you have different things where there's a percentage odds of getting things or not getting things, and the main thing it's used for is booster boxes. And I know you probably already know that, but I think for the general consumer, it's so invaluable and not enough consumers use it. And for the longest time, like you, you, if you compared certain products for flesh and blood, the expected value for like Arcane Rising Unlimited was so, was, was skewed so much higher than the rest of the products, it wasn't funny. And if you've talked to anyone who knows their shit, they would have told you that. Like any other product, and, and I'm speaking in the past, about three or four months ago, I haven't run the EV as of yet, not really buying a lot recently. But all I can tell you is I did the EV calc and I was like, oh, well, well, Arcane Rising is definitely like, for me, I kind of go like, oh, this is like 130 or, you know, 120. But, but I, I want to get into more about like, how you can use it as a consumer. But I first want to say that I think that the, the true, true way that expected value is used is in max box openings. So what you see here, when you, when you have a, a, an individual or entity who has a shitload of boxes, right? And they decide, okay, I want to open them all and I want to flip the singles, keep some other ones, and like maybe I want to open a hundred or two hundred boxes and you know sell all the singles and let's see how much I can make back. So let's say an individual wants to own wants to open a hundred booster boxes of Ulcum Trath, right? Let's just keep it very simple in this example. So that's like let's say they overpaid and paid a hundred dollars for each box. So they're paying a hundred dollars for each box. Uh, they're <laughs> purchasing a hundred. So. Our little math here is $10,000 is what they have to spend. Now, if they do the EV of the box and they say, okay, well, opening one of these boxes, I'm gonna get a certain amount of majestics, rares, super rares, and all that stuff. Honestly, I think the easiest formula is just looking at the majestic slot the, the, the rainbow foil slot for Majestics and the super rares. Anything under super rare is just bulk at this point. I mean, even the super rares, most of them are just bulk. To calculate the EV, anything under, you know, a dollar fifty or two dollars a card is bulk. You like, th if you really want to try to be conservative as a person, you, you, you got to do that. So let's say this person, you know, store owner or yeah, let's say it's a store owner. They, they purchase, you know, 100 boxes of these for $100 each. <laughs> they overpaid from their distributor. And uh, they're, they're very new to the game. And uh, they, they calculated an EV on this was $140. That means that they're going to make $40 on each box as profit. So 40 times, you know, 100 is they're going to make $4,000 on their $10,000 investment. Now, you might say, whoa, Bronson, that's genius. I've got to go out and do it now. But no, man, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't end there. So even though you, you 
on paper could make $4,000. There's so many other factors that you have to take into consideration. The biggest factor is market change. Like sometimes, let's say, you know, what happened with Arcane Rising in the past is the EV was just insane on each box, like $130 each box. People figured it out, purchased a shitload, and then put it all on the market, and then the box, the, the EV went down because there's so much more supply out there because so many people did box openings, in my opinion. I don't know for sure, but I definitely saw a huge increase in supply once people started figuring it out. So, you know, let's say you think you're gonna make 4,000. Oh, well, market uh, changes in the, in the two week span of you getting all that stuff on TCG player, eh. And then not only that, but you know, you have to sell the cards and there's transaction fees on, and you know, the TCG player fees or eBay fees, you're gonna be paying a lot of fees. And then on top of that, you don't know how fast it's going to sell. Maybe it takes a week, maybe it takes three weeks or a month. It takes a long period of time to get rid of a big, huge inventory if it open a hundred bucks. So there's a lot of complications when it goes into mass box openings as stores or, or individuals. And in my mind, you have to make sure your margins are fat, are really fat. If you come to me and say, hey, I'm gonna do a mass box opening, I'm gonna make 10%. That's the EV that I calculated on this. If I do it in bulk, I'm gonna make 10% of my money. I mean, don't, it's dumb. That's not a good idea. I mean, it, in my mind, you have to make like at least 40, 50% margins pre everything else. And even then it's a risk and, and, and you're really, you know, gunning in there for, for all these different things. But to the whole point I'm trying to make is that stores who want to do this or individuals who do want a mass box opening, EV is very important because let, let's do another example. Let's say store owner B, right? So we just talked about store owner A. Store owner B doesn't do the expected value of his uh, Crucible War Box, right? And let's say the, the EV of this was roughly, you know, $70, $70. And he's buying for them $100 each and opening them up for the singles and going to sell the singles. He's going to take a bath of buying and opening these boxes and trying to sell the singles. So it's very important. And basically, the, you know, the formula is quite simple. I'll try to put some stuff in the, in the, in the description below. I don't want to, you know, do a Excel sheet and everything. I have personal Excel sheets where I'm like, I calculate the EV on boxes and, and all that stuff because I want to be an informed consumer, man. I, when I buy a box, I want to have the odds in my favor. It's like, let's say you go into a casino, right? And it, let's say that you had the ability, right? to, you know, there, there's a bunch of different slot machines, but you had the ability to research ahead of time which slots gave you the best, you know, earnings on, you know, your, your uh, you know, coin flip or whatever, you know, you're, when, you, when you're playing the slots, some slots gave better payouts, right? When you do that, I, I think anyone would, because if you're gambling your money and, it, and, and if you're opening one of these boxes, you are gambling when you're purchasing this. It, it's a gamble and that, that, that's okay. But basically when you you know buy any of these products, it's, it's a whole gamble. So if I could tell you, hey, maybe there's a, a formula that you could do ahead of time before you purchase these products. And then you, you're a more uh, you know savvy consumer and you're like, oh, this is only $70 EV. This is only $110 EV. Well, this one is probably better to open in the long run. And, you know, I might hit a more valuable card in this box, which I could sell for what I want. And I think that as a whole, I think consumers need to be more just diligent at, at running the calculation. I, I know it's, I know it's boring and I know it sometimes sucks, but honestly, it, it's smart because you're going to make a lot more returns on paper in the long run because expected value, man, it's, it, it's really important like that. And I think that overall people use it as a term where it's like, you know, they're, they're talking about the market value, but they don't explain, they don't understand the whole impact on it. And I think overall, from what I've discussed today, 
you know, the, the consumer can really benefit from the analysis. And I definitely would, I wouldn't recommend, but in my, what I do, I don't do the nitty gritty. I don't look at the rares. I don't look at the commons. I don't, I don't really look at the super rares. I just look at the majestics, the legendaries, and the fables. And I mean, if you do the, the formula for that, let me talk about the formula a little bit. It, it's pretty simple. I mean, if, if a legendary, from what we've heard in the past from Legend Story Studios, let's say it's like, you know, um, $500 for, for a legendary for, you know, Welcome's Wrath. Let's say the heart of Fyandel is uh, 500 bucks on the mid. All you do to find the, you know, the ex expected value of that one card slot is multiply it by 1 over 40, right? Which would give you something like, I don't know, like maybe 15 bucks, 13 bucks. My math is shit. But but you get my drift. So let's say the Heart of Fandale adds $12 because you do 1 divided by 40 because you have a 1 in 40 chance of opening a Heart of Fandale in that box. And then you multiply it by the 500. Then you, you do it for all the other slots. You take all the legendary cards and, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, Flesh and Blood, all the legendary cards are around like $100, $150. So let's say you did an average of all those. So what you do is you add all the, the costs of the legendaries up, right? You divide by the number of legendaries, which is five. And let's say the average price of all the legendaries is like $120. Well, then you take 120 times 0.25 because you have a one in four chance of getting a legendary that Legend Story Studios has told us on their website. So that adds about like $35 to the box. So you take 35 from the legendary slot, add it to the 12 from the fable slot. So we're at like $47 from this box for just the expected value of those two slots. You do this for all the other slots, like the Majestics and, the, and then the Rainbow Foil Majestics. And honestly, for me, I stop there because everything else is pretty much bulk and you can't really sell that very fast and the fees don't really, <laughs> <laughs> make up for the thing like if you sell a 25 cent card the stamp to send the thing out is gonna be 55 cents it's just a hassle man so i think that once you do that simple thing of, of calculating those two types of things i mean even if you just do the fable and then the legendary and then you know some majestics i mean i think that's you know you, you're pretty game and set and then you can have a a scale to compare these booster boxes because when you're at the store and you're thinking about what to buy it helps and i think that some people do the ev calc and, and you know i, I want to put a huge ass disclaimer is that you can't take ev and then just be like oh well i'm gonna open um eight boxes and i'm gonna get you know this amount of money it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that you know at the end of the day it is a gamble it, you don't know how many fables you're gonna get you don't know how many legendaries you're gonna get those are just averages it's a it's a means to like forecast but it doesn't predict if that makes any sense and i think that what i said in the beginning really reigns true if you're a a, a person who's going to do a box a mass box opening of like a hundred hundred plus boxes it, it can reasonably forecast or, or it can reasonably predict but if you're only open eight boxes eh, it's not really going to predict anything at all of what you're going to get it's just you know kind of there is a, a guiding point to be like oh well this box is better than the other and i think it will be interesting in the future if, if there are more websites if there are more tools that, that allow people to analyze in that fashion because, you know, the, the general consumer right now doesn't really look at that <laughs> too often from, from what I've seen. And uh, it's very interesting. And I, I think just to wrap it up and explain with the Arcane Rising situation, I don't think it, it's as good as it was before. I know there's some reprints coming out that we've heard of from... from uh, Everfest, uh, the Arcanic Skullcap, which uh, put a shitload of EV in uh, in that box. And, you know, another thing is like the Command and Conquer and the Art of Wars. I mean, those are huge hits in that those boxes, man. And not only that, those cards are like staple. So in the past, man, that uh, the Arcane Rising box was the box to get. 
who when will it'll be interesting to see in the future if there's other boxes that really appreciate better because of the generic cards because of the cards are that are in there that are going to be used for all all of the the decks and it, it really is cool how that is and how much price is in the box because of that you know because all in all i mean we haven't seen too many generic cards in the newer boxes I and mean, i'm going on a tangent here but you have tales of aria and monarch and it's all about like this elemental stuff or light and dark there's not as many generics as there was in the past with uh welcome to wrath and arcane rising which is which is very interesting so i guess we'll see what happens with that because when you have all these heroes and when you have all these decks and you have certain cards like you know sigil of souls red or Command and Conquer Red, there are staples in every single deck that you need. You know, it's 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 going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens with those types of boxes long term. And, and if there's going to be reprints and whatnot. But anyway, uh, that's my discussion about EV. I hope, I hope this has been uh, somewhat, uh, not educational, but, uh, you know, entertaining. <laughs> entertaining is the key word I'm going to use. And, uh, yeah, man, let me know if you have any questions, but ultimately, if you're a player, you know, even if you're a player and you're like, Bronson, I don't care about that. I just want to play the damn game. I respect that. And I, I really do. But the thing is, if you want to buy more, if you want to have more of a collection to actually play with, I would consider doing it. And if you're a store uh, who's going to do a mass box opening on Unlimited, uh, yeah, you know, good luck rolling the dice in the, the casino there, bub. And if, uh, you're a consumer who's just like, yo, man, I just, I, I, I'm new to this. I don't know what to get. I, I just want to make an informed decision. Well, then you might want to consider doing a, you know, really simple calculations in Excel, you know, running the, the numbers for the legendary fable and majestic just to figure out what box is more advantageous because you worked hard for your money and making the best informed decision is, is the way to go. Thanks for watching.